very appreciative of your time. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we do have a, a, at least one parent, might have a couple more here with us that I'm not seeing uh, in the world of Zoom, but uh, thanks so much. The, uh, and we do have a number of the uh, Department of Higher Ed staff are here to provide, uh, to provide some help and information. Uh, and, the, and, the, and so this is all very good together. My name is Ben Boggs. I'm the Chief of Staff at the Department of Higher Ed. I'm substituting uh, for Dr. Angie Petoni, who's our Executive Director, who is ill this week. And we're sorry she's not able to join us. But I do have her notes. And if I may, I'm going to be glancing at the screen here to make sure I get uh, some of the information correct. But some of the main points we want to get at, and then we'll shift on here and, uh, and have some others speak. The, um, some of the main points that, that we at the Department of Higher Ed, we spend an awful lot of time talking about how to make higher education opportunities more accessible, equi equitable, and affordable for our students across Colorado, and for our high school students across Colorado. Um, with our economy coming out of this global pa pandemic and recession, uh, it's very important that we all talk about the future, how we can, uh, from a statewide perspective, how do we beef up our workforce, how do we prepare to uh, enhance our economic and communities uh, to, to, the, to the next stage of the world beyond our current wonderful year 2020. But part of that also, of course, goes back to the students and families of Mesa County Valley Public Schools and how to lower college costs so that post-secondary education is attainable and accessible, uh, however, we, however it best suits uh, the family students in need. We know that a lot of folks have talked about taking a year off and deferring, perhaps doing something else. Uh, but really what we're trying to put, we'd like to say is make those plans, keep working at it. It's, it's awfully hard to get back started once you've stopped. It's easy to keep going. The uh, important thing though is, is that once you get started, stick with it and to finish. And when what, a lot of the issues that come with affordability and student debt comes in situations where students uh, get started in certain situations and then stop without making plans on how to resume and how to uh, reach other issues. Um, one thing also I'd like to point out is that um, earning college credit while one is in high school, that um, many, in many areas, our, our, we, the state is bringing college directly to our high school students. Nearly 50,000, more than 50,000 students have taken at least one dual credit enrollment course during the 2018-19 academic year, which is about a third of all high school juniors and seniors in Colorado. It's incredible. 97% uh, of our school districts uh, uh, offer dual enrollment courses, and make, we're working to make them available everywhere. And I'll let, uh, we'll certainly can talk about uh, Mesa, uh, Mesa's situation here as we get on into the talk. But work-based learning, such as apprenticeships, uh, internships, uh, these activities also help boost success. A recent study found that students who participated in job fairs, work shadowing, and internships were more likely to be motivated and work hard at school and to see their education as relevant to their future. They also have a better understanding of what are their skills and what, are they, what do they like to do. And that helps them proceed on and uh, understand how their college and post-secondary work can connect to um, after, after school work after college. So if these opportunities are available to you, uh, we would encourage you to take them. And learning outside of the classroom can teach you about what you enjoy and what you're good at. We also know that going to college is expensive and it's a big decision for a family to make. But uh, to compete in today's knowledge economy, nearly all of our young people need some sort of education beyond high school. And that's why we're dedicated uh, to making college as accessible and affordable as we can. Uh, your unique talents and passion should guide you in your education beyond high school, whether it's college or university or certificate or an apprenticeship program. Not everyone's path will look the same and that's just fine. There's not a one size fits all when it comes to uh, education after high school. And applying to college can seem like a lot of work. Maybe you have a part-time job, maybe you're helping take care of family, maybe sports, uh, there's all kinds of activities going on. These can demand a lot of your time uh, and planning for college can fall through the cracks and you can always keep saying, I'll, I'll do it later. Uh, one thing that can help you get, 
navigate all this is a website, my Colorado journey. Uh, it's a resource tool that can help uh, students and the families navigate applying to college, picking a career path, applying for financial aid and more. So my Colorado journey, I think we'll probably have some more comments about that later. And the, the uh, web link has just been put into the chat. So thank you very much. With rising tuition and student debt, the value of college has been called into question. Um, and some you know, ask, is it even worth it? But the research shows that yes, it really is. But as I mentioned earlier, the point is you have, the point is to stick with it and to graduate. Uh, our return on investment report uh, helps Coloradans understand their options and what, what's best for you. And I'm sure we'll be talking about that here a little later. It's hard to predict the exact amount of return uh, and what you'll make after you graduate depends on where you go to school and uh, how long you take to earn your degree and what you want to major in, all those things. That always adds into that. There are other choices about either living at home, living on campus. Those also impact uh, the expenses involved. But our college and universities have a lot of aid to help. Uh, close to 90% of our students at two-year colleges and 72% at four-year colleges Receive, receive some kind of mix of federal, state, and institutional financial aid that reduces the overall cost. Thanks to this support, students from uh, low and middle income families often attend for very low cost or even tuition free. And I bet we'll hear some more about that here in, in, as we talk. Uh, even better, the number of students taking on debt is actually decreasing across the state. And that's because our institutions are working hard to help make uh, access more affordable. So I would encourage you to be to work with your high school counselor and explore education and your options and what appeals to you and to find what's the best way for you to tr transition into the into the next area you want to go. Now two th quick things I'd like to emphasize. One is the FAFSA. FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid and it opens up every year October 1st. And FAFSA is by filling it out it's a way for you, to, for students and their families to secure federal grants, work, study, loans, and other financial aid that, that can make colleges and technical schools within reach. Every year, there are students who are eligible to receive what's known as Pell Grants. And in Colorado, we leave about $47 million unclaimed in federal aid that's available to our students because they don't fill out the FAFSA to see what they're eligible for and to obtain that money. So completing the FAFSA is free. It's, uh, it takes about 30 minutes to do. It's a lot easier than it used to be. You can do it online. Uh, you have to go back and do it every year. And my guess is there's assistance to do that on the college campuses. I can tell you as a parent, once you filled it out once though, you've got your account, you go back in the next year and it will re it'll repopulate as you go into it. You don't have to do the whole thing again. It'll take care of it. So, um, Let's see, last thing is what's known as the CASFA. And the CASFA, our department launched a statewide application for financial aid for our asset students. These students are strictly called asset after Senate Bill 13033, advancing students for a stronger economy of tomorrow. In 2019, the General Assembly had passed a bill, financial aid for students with in-state tuition. It's allowed state-funded financial aid to be awarded to students who do not have lawful immigration status, but have resided in the state for at least three years before graduating from a Colorado high school or passing a high school equivalency exam and admitted to a participating college within 12 months of finishing high school. And they must sign an, an affidavit affirming that they are seeking or will seek legal status as soon as they're eligible. So um, because these are non-US students, they're not eligible for FAFSA, but this does show, you know, they're on their way to citizenship and here as Coloradans this CASFA helps the institutions then be able to determine the institutional aid. So I wanna leave it at there, that, but I do wanna take a second and introduce the others who are with us on the call. I think we've had a little more time for more people to join us. Very pleased that we can have, as I've already said hello to, Dr. Diana Serco, Superintendent of Mesa County Valley Public Schools. Glad that you're here. Pre <laughs> President Tim Foster at Colorado Mesa University. President Foster, always good to see you. And President Ron Granger, Colorado Northwestern Community College, very good to have you with us. Uh, so thank you for that. I will now cease all my yapping. And Dr. Serco, if you would like to say a few words, please do join in. 
Well, I guess I would just echo what Bennett said in the sense that, you know, our students doing concurrent enrollment and also getting their certificates through, you know, for uh, CTE. We have a robust partnership with Colorado Mesa University and Western Colorado Community College, which of course is a, a, a arm of uh, CMU and such an incredible resource for our students. So I wanna to stress to any parents that are watching that it's so important for kids to really take advantage of those great opportunities in high school. For our um, four high schools, we have um, a bus going to each of them three or four times a day to take students to classes at WCCC or CMU. Um, the idea being that if, if we, you know, that's when I we try to tell parents, if you can do this right, as you talked about, then you will have, kids will walk out of there with two years of college under their belt. And you know that's a, a big leg up for our families and for our students. And it really gives students a strong pathway for the future. So for instance, you know, the Ascent program, early scholars, high school scholars, tech scholars, I mean, all of those programs are, you know, just a game changer for our students. And you know, we have some great stories about, you know, students who, um, you know, my husband's a high school football coach. This, Big lineman came to him with tears streaming down the street, you know, his face, he's all excited. He was, you know, had just finished his certificate in welding at WCCC. And, you know, he's a young man whose parents both work um, two jobs and he, you know, each, and he was just excited that he's gonna be able to, he had already gotten his certificate in welding and already had a position at an area community or at an area business. So those are the kind of examples we have. We had um, students gain over 400 certificates and, and over several thousand credits at CMU last year. So it's just those partnerships make such a difference. So I just wanna encourage, like I said, any of our parents watching any of our students to take advantage of these incredible opportunities. We're applying for a RISE grant now at, in partnership with CMU and WCCC to really increase even more of those opportunities for our students. So we feel really fortunate to have the, those opportunities for our kids. We have, you know, um, one of our high schools is a P-TECH program that really piggybacks on that and is able to really build on those partnerships as well. So it's just exciting to know what options are available for kids out there with concurrent enrollment some of them, you know, taking classes at their um, school every day. So if you're not, if you're nervous about your child going to, you know, college during the day and then returning back to school, there are classes that are taught at each of our high schools where those students walk out of there with CMU credits. So I think it is um, a great opportunity to continue to work on. And I just, like I said, I want to really encourage people to talk to your um, high school counselors, if you have any questions, and of course, we're always happy to answer any questions about that from our office to encourage parents, because sometimes parents will say, now, wait a minute, this sounds too good to be true. It's like, well, it was really designed as part of the cap for k program that was passed in 2008 for students to get those strong opportunities, and when you have the opportunity like we do to have a partnership with, you know, a, a you know, university right in our community and with a CTE program at Western, you know, Colorado Community College. It's just too good of a deal to pass up and too much of a great opportunity. So we just really want to encourage people to take advantage of those. Because even if your child decides they don't want to go to a four year, having a skill by an already a couple years under their belt is a big leg up. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And I want to just, like I said, CMU is a, you know, I, our, many of our teachers get their master's program there. It's just like, once again, those partnerships make a really big difference. Thank you so very much. Dr. President Foster, please join in. And thank you. And I'm going to steal the screen if I can. And uh, I think a picture is always worth a thousand words. So hopefully <laughs> you all can see that screen. 
I'll let you nod somebody if you can. Ben, you see it? Thank you, that's helpful. So um, you talked a lot about sort of why college and what the benefits are. And I know in, in uh, joining my two colleagues here on the call, um, both Ron Granger as well as Diana Serco, this map just reflects in the green are the counties that have a higher percentage of their population with a college degree and the orangish color are those that do not. And so we find too many of those in Western Colorado and I think we do what we do because we wanna change that dynamic. As you know, Colorado is one of the most educated states in the union and it really is not beneficial for us to pull that average down. And so for a lot of kids, it's why college? Um, certainly there's all sorts of benefits. Uh, it's a public and private good but really what motivates a lot of kids is what's it going to mean to me? Although I think partly what motivates us is what's it mean to our communities? And so civic engagement, which means voting in elections, participating, volunteering, all those sorts of things just go up uh, very steadily. Uh, the further you go with getting a high school diploma, getting some college, obviously earning an associate's, a bachelor's, or even an additional degree. No surprise, you see the same thing in terms of percentage uh, without health insurance. And you see that as you climb that ladder and gain more education, you're much more likely to be able to provide your family with coverage uh, and with health, and health insurance coverage. Um, job opportunities uh, also go hand in glove with earning uh, and pursuing educational opportunities. And then no big surprise, you get paid. Uh, you get paid better as you climb that ladder again and again. And so we think that should be motivating uh, to students. I think what makes us nervous right now during the pandemic is the negative 12% across the state of Colorado in terms of first time entering students. And I, that's no one's fault. It is a result of everybody leaving in the spring and not able to really grab students and help fill out the paths that have been described as well as just applications. Wall Street Journal here about a week or two ago actually did a nationwide analysis and said that was minus 16 percent, uh, which again is a concern to all of us. And so how we get back on top of that, I think, is an issue for that all of us are going to struggle with and try to address. And so I'll get out of that PowerPoint and quit killing you with with pictures um, and come back and just say we appreciate the opportunity, Ben, for you all to tee this up and let us talk to folks around Western Colorado and encourage them to pursue something post high school. I think as Diana said, we have a great partnership with School District 51, Montrose, Delta as well. And so just looking forward to building on those and moving Western Colorado forward. Very good. Thank you so much. President Granger, please join in. Thank you so much. And and see, now Tim is uh, showing us all the stuff we need to show, so I don't have to do that. So I, I appreciate that, uh, President Foster. But I, I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about CNCC and some of the things. But I want to first say that one of the things I think an advantage for us here compared to some of the other community colleges is we have, uh, I think, a great partnership with CMU. Uh, a lot of our students, uh, most of our graduates, or a large percentage of our graduates go to CMU after they graduate from, from Colorado Northwestern. And, and we work together on, on several things. So I think it's really important that we know that, that the transfer is going through and doing well, especially with the, the bridge to bachelor's program that, that has just been initiated. So students can take um, the classes and get their degree at a two-year college and at, call it at CNCC. And then it's just a, a real easy, transparent transfer to CMU. And CMU, I understand, is participating in this. So it makes it just a, a simple process to go through. Um, I, I want to say that, you know, I, I believe, I want to be in, in education if I didn't believe in what, what our colleges do. And I, I've been at um, uh, small schools like I am now. I'm at uh, CNCC is a school of about 1,500 students. So we are pretty small, but but I've also been in larger schools, and and I, I just got to say it doesn't matter where you go. It, getting that education is the most important thing that you need to do. It just makes a big difference in your life, and it always will. 
I guess I wanted to point out a few things about us that we have that are probably unusual compared to some of the other schools, especially uh, community colleges. Uh, one, we have uh, an aviation flight program and an aviation maintenance program, both, which are kind of unusual, especially on a community college campus, that you would have both those flight those uh, programs. Uh, we um, have our own planes, so we own our own planes. We actually run the airport, so our cost is cheaper than a lot of other places because we. Uh, buy our fuel at wholesale instead of having to pay the premium price. We also don't have to pay anything for putting our planes away or anything using the airport whatsoever. So it's kind of nice that we do that. The other thing that saves us is with our aviation maintenance program, we can have our students after they get to a certain point that they can help us with uh, the easy maintenance of, of our planes, otherwise uh, changing the oil and so on, those kinds of things. So we don't have to have somebody from the outside do that. So it just makes it so it's easier for us to offer the, these courses and these programs at a, um, at a cheaper rate than, than a lot of the others. I think outside of that, our, our flight students participate in, in contests and they've been to nationals a couple of times and actually placed, I think it's three years ago, placed second in the nation as far as community colleges were concerned. Uh, and they, they participate and they go against the several large schools in our region, uh, one of the schools that's in our region is the Air Force Academy, and they seem to always beat us when, when we're doing it, but they probably should. Uh, we understand that, but, but we still think we do a great job with it. Besides that, and then that, by the way, that's on our Rangeley campus. We actually have two campuses. Rangeley is one, which is we're just about 20 miles from the Utah border, and then Craig is our other campus, and it's about 20 miles from the Wyoming border. So we're we're 90 miles apart and we're about 90 miles, or Rangeley is about 90 miles from, uh, from Grand Junction. So we're, we're up here in the Northwest corner, which is a great place to be. A couple of other things that we have that I think are important for students if they're interested is, is we have a what, National Park Service program, which is a one semester program. And we're one of seven of these programs throughout the nation. And we're the only one that's at a community college. So our students come here, they'll be here for one semester and they will get their training so that they can go and either be what they call a temporary until they finish out their, their um, kind of internship as far as a park ranger, or they can get a permanent job as a park ranger in some of the different states. So we usually run about 25 students every semester. So it, it's just a great group. They learn a lot of things from handling people to even we go out, we have our own, um, um, shooting range so they go out and practice that and they will uh, shoot their pistols and rifles so that they, we, they get proficient in those. Uh, two other programs, another one here on this campus that I think is really unusual for Northwest Colorado is we have a marine science program also. Uh, which means our students actually learn how to scuba dive. We have a reservoir out here they use. And then depending on the year, they'll either go to the East Coast or the West Coast and go to the ocean and they'll do scuba diving there also. So they learn to do both of those uh, either in the fresh water or the salt water. Uh, and it, it, it's really a pretty amazing program that uh, has been, we get, keep getting more and more students here, but I think it's because where we're located in the mountains in, in Western Colorado, but we're offering these kind of courses. On the Craig campus, one of the biggest things that we have out there is <clears throat> We have a paleontology program, uh, which means we actually have a dinosaur that we're putting together on the Craig campus. We're uh, a repository there. And Walter, that's a di dinosaur's name, is, uh, was found in Rio Blanco County. And they moved him to Moffat County and that now they're uh, trying to finish putting him together. We think we have all the bones from Walter and now it's just getting them cleaned out, getting them out of the rocks and, and all that. So it, it's pretty interesting to go down and see. When, if you ever come to our Craig campus, you let us know where you can actually go down and hold some of these bones in your hand, which is pretty interesting uh, to have. One of the things about Walter that's kind of unusual is we actually found skin, dinosaur skin that belongs to Walter, which is very unusual. And the way he got his name Walter is because uh, a dog that found the first bones name was Walter. So that's kind of, uh, where he came from, but it's a great program. We have summer digs every summer, except for this last summer for, and all of you know why. Uh, so we actually go out in the state of Colorado in different places and we dig for dinosaur bones. 
So our students get that opportunity. We have our students that are in our program here do it. Plus we'll have students from the East Coast that come out here a lot of times that are in a master's or a doctor's program, doctorate program that will come out and, and dig also. So th those are some of the uh, things that we have as far as being kind of unusual for a community college. We still offer a lot of the other programs. We have a DH program, a dental hygiene program here on the Rangeley campus. And it's well known for its pass rate. And we've, we're over 95% pass rate over the last 10 years. We've had three years inside there where we had 100% pass rate on the state boards uh, on the first time through for those students. So they do a great job. We have our nursing program, our auto program. Those are on the Craig campus. And so we have a lot of different things that we offer. Um, and, and one thing that we are a little different probably than some of the other colleges is because we're small, we call ourselves an open door policy college, which means my door is always open. All of our vice president's doors are always open. So if students want to stop by and just chat, they can come to our offices anytime. Uh, we don't, uh, uh, even if it's just come by to say hi, or if they have uh, things that they want to bring to us because things are, are not quite going the way they thought they would. But it really gives a, a, something that's unusual for a community college that we can do that. And the other thing, and I know they do this at CMU also, but we have our residence halls for a community college. That's good. And we also have eight different sports that we offer. So we have, we participate in uh, NJCAA, which uh, is between basketball, volleyball, soccer, rodeo, uh, I'm trying to think of baseball and softball. We, we have all of those different things. So it gives our, uh, a lot of us a chance to go out and watch these things. Our students get involved in it. They get involved in our communities. Uh, again, our communities are small like we are. But I, I got to say that one of the best things you can do, it doesn't matter if you come here, if you go to CMU or you go anywhere. If, if the students will go, they'll find out that there's a big difference between not going to college and going to college. It, it is fantastic. And again, I want to, I'm going to, uh, push out to Tim because I think that CMU is is a, a great addition to the western side of, of Colorado. I mean, without them, I don't know where we would be. Uh, so I appreciate what they do and what they have to offer. And and so, so we want to be a part of that. Uh, C, uh, CNCC is, is a school that we think we can grow. I saw Tim's numbers where they're down just a little bit. We're the same. We're down about 2% for the fall, which for the state of Colorado and community college, our sister schools, are averaging about 14% being down. So we feel pretty good about being down just that 2%. And a lot of that can be, uh, we understand why. So but anyway, if there's any questions I can answer or anything that I can, something else I can say, I'd be pleased to do that. But again, thank you for giving us this. I think it's a great opportunity for us to tell us, tell anybody about our schools and about how important education is. Thank you so much. That's tremendous. I, and I got to tell you, between uh, scuba diving, airport, and park ranger uh, preparation, I, I, I want to sign up. So uh, I'd like to take all that and uh, not work anymore, because that just sounds like a lot more fun. But this, okay. is, this, this is terrific. And I, I do want to say the partnership among the, the from the school districts to uh, the CNCC and, and the CMU, this is just tremendous. And uh, it is good to hear about this. I, I, I do we I do have, there's some department staff with us and they're gonna go into some greater depth than some of my overarching comments. Uh, and I'd like to invite them to come on and, and participate a bit. Uh, Jamie, thank you so much for being here. Can you help please uh, refine the remarks I made so they can be more useful at, at the moment? Thank you. Thank you, Ben. My name is Jamie Barciaga. I have a shared position with the Department of Higher Education and the Department of Human Services. I work with former foster youth and the Education Training Voucher Program. So the only real, real thing that I have to give in addition to Ben's remarks, thank you, you did a really great job, is that if you are interested in exploring some of the financial aid information that we have on My Colorado Journey, we have an outcome called Find and Apply for My Financial Aid, which you can get assistance with filling out the FAFSA application, as well as the Colorado Opportunity Fund. And we do have some CASFA, CASFA information on there as well. I would also like to invite you to join us, parents, administrators, counselors, teachers, on any of the webinars that we offer. We offer three a week. 
there's a Tuesday morning webinar, Wednesday morning, and Thursday evening, we actually offer webinars for families. So this evening, I'll be going on and assisting families with filling out the financial aid application and also presenting on financial aid. And so that's really what I have to add to Ben's remarks. And I'll put my contact information in the chat box should you have more questions. And thank you, Ben, for covering the information on financial aid and CASPA. Thank, thank you very much, Jamie. You're very gracious. Uh, and Megan, Megan McDermott, thank you so much for all of this. Please join in. Great. Thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Megan McDermott. I'm the Director of Communications for the department. And I'm gonna just cover a little bit about our Colorado Collegiate Apprenticeship Program. Um, we have staff that manages this program. Um, they couldn't be here today. So I've done a lot of communications and marketing around the program. So I thought I'd just step in and give you a little bit of information. Um, this is the website um, for our program. And so this program is available. It was funded by a grant from the US Department of Labor. Um, and so it's administered by the Department of Higher Education in partnership with our local colleges and universities. And really the goal is to create more than 6,000 Colorado collegiate apprenticeships by summer of 2024. Um, and so it, I'll just kind of show you a little bit about around the website. Um, there's this great tab for apprentices. Um, and it will talk a little bit more about the program. So this is a collegiate apprenticeship. So this would be after you know you graduate from high school. This would be something that you can um, apply through one of the partnering colleges, um, and then it would match you with um, a site as well. Um, and so it's it's an earn while you learn program. Um, so there are a list of advantages you can earn while you learn. You receive hourly pay while you um, take the time for your training. There's a lot of advantages here. Um, it's a very easy process. You kind of explore the opportunities that are available. I'm going to show you a quick fact sheet in a minute. You apply and roll, and then, you know, you also, um, you know, do your apprenticeship, and then you start your career all in around about six months. So it's a expedited program. Um, there is an, a little um, window here where you could submit information if you want to stay up to date on the program. Um, and then we have a section for employers about, and then we've gotten some great news coverage on this program as well. I did want to show you one other piece of information on our program. Um, currently, um, we have about um, 45 plus different specialties available. And right now we're only in healthcare occupations and we're launching our IT and security um, really soon, I think early next year. So they might not be available on the website yet, but they will be soon. And so we cover these specific occupations. Hopefully you can see this. Um, happy to take some questions or you can sign up to receive more information. I will put the link to the website in the chat so you have it. But this is just a really great opportunity to earn while you learn. Thank, thank you. And I noticed that we, we've been putting in some uh, email addresses and other things in the chat. And so I invite you to take a look at that and scan through because um, we do want to make sure this information is available. Um, Michael Vente, you're also with us this evening. Please come talk a bit more about concurrent enrollment and uh, return on investment. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, Michael Vonte, Senior Director of Research and Data Governance at CDHE. Very glad to be with you and, and kind of tell the, the story of all the good things that are going on in Colorado and what we're doing at CDHE to hopefully um, continue all of that good work. So um, in the tradition of links in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and post a few more things in there that I'm going to run through. Um, everything that Dr. Boggs and my other CDHE colleagues have, have um, talked about tonight is all very much aligned to the work that we're doing broadly at CDHE that's aligned to our master plan. And being able to really lean into that work of, of trying to get to a 66% educational attainment rate by 2025, and being able to lean into different 
strategies as part of that work, um, focusing on increasing credential completion overall, erasing equity gaps, increasing supports to, to students, and also leaning into innovation and affordability. So being able to, to have all of those things be our North Star as we do a lot of this work. Also a link there to another resource that's related to our master plan, our roadmap to containing college costs and making college uh, affordable. So in working with Governor Polis and, and others um, across state agencies, being able to identify some of those uh, initiatives and actions that we can take to make college more affordable for students and families and being able to, to elevate all of that work as much as we can. So that document outlines some of those, those initiatives, some of that work uh, in the short, medium, and long term that we'll all be engaged with. And I know that some of our institutional partners also engaged with um, as they can. As, as uh, Dr. Bogg said, one of the ways that we can lean into making college more affordable is providing those concurrent enrollment opportunities to students. So being able to, while they're in high school, access those college level courses, uh, largely tuition free, and, and being able to, to really set them up for success as they go on into post-secondary education. So I had put in the chat a little bit earlier a link to our annual report on concurrent enrollment. I also put a link in the, in the chat to um, a Colorado Department of Education website that is is meant to help students and families and also districts navigate the concurrent enrollment process and being able to put more information at their fingertips so that uh, you know about all of the different concurrent enrollment options that are available to you um, under the state's concurrent enrollment program. Also, uh, being able to think about all of the aspects of the return on investment of higher education. Uh, uh, President Foster talked a, a lot about the, the different outcomes that we see for those who, who do go and complete post-secondary education and being able to put in the hands of individuals as much information as we can about the return on investment that they can expect. So um, again, I posted earlier in the chat our, our annual report on return on investment. Also posted in the chat our interactive ROI tool. So, through some well-governed responsible data sharing that we do with the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, being able to calculate wage outcomes for those individuals who complete uh, various post-secondary education programs uh, one, five, and 10 years after um, completion. And so being able to present that to students of all ages as they make the decisions that are best for them in terms of programs, in terms of institutions, in terms of what will best meet their needs. So just doing our best to via that report and that tool and also my Colorado journey, being able to present that to, to individuals. I'll also put out there um, another element of all of our work at CDHE is doing our best to democratize data and make sure that the data that we collect from a whole host of places gets into the hands of, of people who need to make decisions, um, both students, families, policymakers, all of the above. And one of the ways that we do that is our district at a glance tool. So uh, a link to that is also in the chat, being able to show those post-secondary outcomes at the K-12 level, at the, at the district and high school level, for various high school graduating classes, just so that you can have a sense of what are those outcomes at, uh, at, at the K-12 level for students who, who complete K-12 and go on to post-secondary. So again, just in the spirit of trying to increase transparency and, and being able to equip individuals with as much information as we can to make the best decision for them. So I'll stop there. I'll also put my email in the chat, happy to answer any other questions and um, any, anything that I might have missed. Very good, thank you. We have done a lot of talking uh, and now let's turn some tables and we'll try to do some more listening. Let's open this up as a general discussion, take in some questions. And I, I, I don't recognize all the names on all the Zoom blocks here. So if you wanna just join in, if we've left anything out that you'd like to add or if there's a question or something to ask, that's why we're all here. I know we've covered a lot of, in of information in a hurry and we've thrown an awful lot of web addresses and email addresses. How, how can we make that, uh, is there a way that we can make that simpler, or easier or more useful? So what we can do, which I did last time was create a resource list after the event, which I shared with the district. Um, so that you can share the recording and possibly the resource list with
families and parents. You know, if we were monks, uh, awkward silence would just be a natural part of life. But, uh, you know, is there anything that we can be doing? Any, any other questions? Is the process on maybe how to get started a good way? Is it, is it good ideas on how to get started? Are we all okay? Well, if we do have a second, Dr. Sorko, do you want to we could tell us about the D51 Rise Grant? Is there you got to be in, you must be in partnership here? This is good. Can you hear me? Yes, we are um, in partnership with CMU, um, and it is modeled after a program that I saw when I was, uh, you know, in action. Really, when I saw it when I was superintendent of Roaring Fork, and it was the pre collegiate program where you had a large number of first generation students who would start in seventh grade in partnership and with, in our case, it'll be in partnership once again with CMU, but also our, um, you know, Chamber of Commerce helping us get mentors and the kids have mentors all the way through. And then they also in the summers, uh, once they get into high school, they spend some time on the college campus, really giving them a vision of the future that they may not have had. And like I said, as first generation students, many of them, uh, their parents did not graduate from high school. And so the um, experience they had at CM, or excuse me, at uh, Roaring Fork School District and still do is that 100% of those students graduate from high school and about a little over 80% of those students graduate from college. So it's just this wonderful partnership that gives kids a vision of the future that inspires them and really it helps them see themselves in a different light. And then that mentor stays with them really from seventh grade all the way through 12th grade. And then many of them have connections even after that with their mentors um, as they're getting that guidance they need when they're you know selecting their uh, college or university experience. And really just, you know, that, like I said, that vision of the future that inspires them to know they can accomplish anything they put their mind to and are willing to work um, hard for. So we're excited about that part. Also, our, you know, and as part of our partnership, many of our students who are looking, um, we do have, like I said, a P-TECH program. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And so many of our students who are, you know, going through at WCCC with getting their certificates and then uh, even going on to engineering at CMU. And so it's just, you know, because of the proximity, it's just an incredible opportunity to build on the opportunities they have available to them. Um, and, you know, we have a high percentage of our students that go to CMU anyway, but we do have many of our students who are bachelor scholars as well as, you know, um, Daniel scholars and many of them select CMU with that scholarship. So, and well as, you know, other colleges and universities um, across the state and across the country, it, it's the Daniels. And so, you know, it's just a chance to give kids that vision that they may not have had and that their family may not have realized is possible for them. And we don't know any parents that don't want, you know, a positive and good life for their children. Very good. Thank you. I know we, I, uh, Mr. Wyatt, I know a high school principal putting you on the spot, but it, any advice that you would have? If you're still with us? Yes, yes I am. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Oh, yeah, um, what I've heard thus far has been pretty darn impressive. Um, I am the principal at the D51 Career Center in Grand Junction, Colorado, and we have a very solid 
um, relationship with WC3, Western Community College, and CMU, half of our kids do take advantage of um, the the opportunities that present themselves. D51 is really well networked with getting our kids through transportation and, and through our concurrent enrollment. And so the, the career centers is unique in that we provide a lot of preparatory opportunities for kids, first generation kids. Um, and, and it's really nice because these kids are highly successful because of the, the emphasis being placed from D51 on not only career CTE, but also obtaining a, a, a post-secondary education. And I can't tell you how important that is for the type of kids that come to the career center. We have a very diverse population um, and they are seeking opportunities. Uh, and and when, they're, when they're so easy to access this way, man, the success rate is tremendous. Um, I can't say enough about that, and we are. We continue to explore through articulated agreements, through PTEC programs, through concurrent enrollment, to ascend, giving these kids opportunities, and it makes a world of difference. And you can just see it. You, you can see it, and we're talking multiple uh, families, multiple um, individuals within families that take advantage of these opportunities. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm 100% behind any time, any place, anywhere that we can get a young person involved and get them on a career pathway that, that includes post-secondary education, let's sign them up. That's tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions or comments? Advice? Well, I thank you very. I thank you all very much for your time today. Thank you for coming together for this. Thanks for the time and preparation. Uh, I do. I certainly appreciate the department staff. I know a lot of folks have pitched in, pull things together. Thank you all for your work every day. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, uh, Dr. Circo, President Foster, President Granger. Thank you, and your staff and the work you do. And I appreciate learning a bit today about uh, the, the partnerships you have and the work uh, being done in your community. So. Thank you so much for that. If there's any way that we can be of service, uh, please let us know and please see the, uh, all the addresses in the chat and the, and the available resources. And, uh, and we'll be back at you as well. If there's some questions and things, uh, we'll reach out to you and ask, uh, please help us understand something we're working on and see if we can't clean something up, make it more useful and helpful. So thank you all for your time today. And uh, any, other, any other comments? All right. Ben, thanks. We appreciate this. This is great, I think. Yeah. Thanks, been, well, let's, get, let's, get a, let's get through this pandemic and find a way to do some of these things in person. That'd be a lot more yeah. fun. That would be definitely, yes. Thank you. That would be great. Thank you all. Thank you. We appreciate all the great information and can't wait to share it. Very good. Thank you.